Welcome back everybody to Keenan K TV. In today's video, I want to talk about why Robert Whittaker could defeat Israel, the last stylebender, Adesanya. I have already made a video where I talked about Israel Adesanya defeating Whittaker, so be sure to check out that with the card that will pop up right now, or you can check it out with the link in the description. And with that being said, let's jump right into the video. This is a fairly difficult fight to break down in favor for either fighter. There are subtle nuances that each fighter can really go in there and execute certain techniques that the opponent is not really all that good in defending against. You see, against Robert Whittaker, somebody like Adesanya, who can go in there, use his height and reach, establish range, and faint him, I'm fairly certain that that will be something problematic for him. However, on the other hand, when you take a look at something that he can do that Adesanya cannot really deal well against, is the fact that Abu Whitaker, he's a very fast fighter, he can cover a great deal of distance with a lot of explosiveness, a lot of power. So in a case that Abu Whitaker may go ahead and explode onto Israel Adesanya, whether the first initial way of defending against that attack that will come from Robert Whitaker, assuming that is the perfect instinct that Israel Adesanya will follow to defend himself, let's Let's say Robert Whitaker lunges in with a big left hook, he misses it. But the thing about Robert Whitaker is he's very good at chaining up the combinations. And let's just assume that he can go in there and miss his left hook. That's no problem, he can still follow it up. And assuming that he can go in there and he can land the first initial left hook as he usually does when he's lunging in, the follow up shots are going to be even more devastating. We have seen against Calvin Gastelum who was a little bit shorter than uh, Robert Whitaker, a little bit less rangier, and he was very successful in coming in, slipping to the outside, and then going in there and getting in range and getting off his own shots. Given the fact that Kelvin Gastelum is a softball fighter, him slipping to the outside and taking the outside on Israel Adesanya is going to be something that will obviously happen against a softball versus orthodox fighter. So for Robert Whitaker, he's not necessarily going to have that certain advantage unless Adesanya will go in there and start switching stances. He's pretty good at switching stances. Whether that will be an advantage against Robert Whitaker or a disadvantage given a certain circumstances that he can put himself in, we will have to wait and see come fight night. But only I would really just have to assume, logically speaking, that as soon as Israel Adesanya may switch over to the southpaw stance, the left hook that Robert Whitaker likes to throw, you would assume just because he can get to the outside a little bit better, you can only assume that he can, for example, slip to the outside and then bounce back in with a lunging left hook. He could do that or that may exactly hinder Robert Whitaker from executing that exact move because Adesanya, with all that consistent head movement, feints, hip feints, um, kicking feints, everything that you can name that is a feint, Adesanya will probably do in that fight. So maybe that can make Robert Whitaker gun shy from throwing that left hook against a southpaw Adesanya. But like I said, those are just only speculations that we will only have an answer to come fight night. One thing that we cannot really understate is how strong Robert Whitaker actually is. Even though that in his last two fights against Joel Romero, he hasn't been able to knock him out, that doesn't take away from the fighter and the abilities that he has to go in there and knock the opponent out. Truly, if you take a look at, for example, Derek Brunson or his fight against Jacare Souza, in these fights we clearly saw what type of a physical strength Robert Whitaker carries inside that octagon. And unlike Calvin Gastelum who has a terrific left hand straight, I truly don't believe that when you take a look at his other skill sets, his other tools, he doesn't really carry the same amount of power or consistency with those other attacks. Robert Whitaker, he does, and that makes him a very difficult fighter, especially if he can go in there and fight the way he always likes to fight. Whitaker can go in there and fight the distance fight against Adesanya. He may not be successful many times, but I do believe that he can have great openings in that matchup as well. He has shown that he can have great leg kicks, great teeth kicks to the body, and these are all tools that he can use against Adesanya. Whereas if you take a look at Adesanya going in there against Calvin Gastelum, it was really just Calvin slipping to the outside or inside to go in there and land his left hand shot. And essentially, as soon as Calvin Gastelum got figured out by his left hand from Adesanya's side, it was virtually a wrap in success for Calvin Gastelum. Yes, he did have a lot more success later down in the fight, but as soon as Adesanya figured out his patterns, it was virtually something that he can go in there and control. But against Robert Whitaker, the arsenal that is present for him to go in there and attack and lunge in on uh, Israel Asanya, that is going to be something that I believe is going to be the biggest difference in this matchup compared to the last one. Now, if we take a look at Robert Whitaker, physically speaking, the guy is as tough as they will come. 
going in there and fighting Yoel Romero twice and not getting knocked out, even though he got dropped and arguably hurt pretty badly, he was still in the fight and he was still miles away from actually really being finished. Against Yoel Romero, yes, he did get dropped, but I think that at that point when he did get dropped, Yoel Romero, he was just lacking that little bit of energy to go in there and finish the fight completely. So in that regard, he has a great way of surviving even when he gets dropped and even when he gets hurt. So for Adesanya to go in there and fight him, especially in this 5 round fight i highly doubt that he can go in there and make it a quick night yes maybe he can go in there and land a knee right on a button followed up with an elbow high kick whatever it may be it can be a short night this is fighting after all but logically speaking looking at the past fights i highly doubt that we will get anything to that extent so with that being said given the fact that this can go all five rounds if it depends on adesanya's side obviously because i honestly believe that out of the two fighters it is really only whitaker that can have a finishing chance in this matchup just the physical power that he carries the speed the explosiveness the arsenal that he can present offensively that is obviously because defensively if Adesanya can establish offense and make Robert Whitaker back up and make him only be defensive that is going to be something that in my opinion will take Robert Whitaker out of his own game out of his own element and then we will see as well Adesanya shine but assuming that this is going to be another performance where Adesanya fights pretty much so consistent in comparison with all of his previous fights I would have to assume that Adesanya will take the outside and stay at a pretty medium to long range which means obviously to stay on the outside and close to the cage essentially so in other words he will be welcoming Robert Whitaker to go in there and be somewhat of the guy that will stand in the middle of the octagon and quote unquote be the ring general because I guess Adesanya you're not really most of the time at least the, the ring general against him because he's just that smart he's just that lank he just knows how to make you come in on him whenever he wants you to like he will give you baits and you will take him and then he will counter you pretty smart fighter but that is exactly one thing that Robert Whitaker is also he's also a very smart fighter and what does really brain smarts have to do with this matchup well obviously if you take a look at calvin gaston versus adesanya you had offense versus defense essentially in this matchup robert whitaker can do both of it he cannot really go in there and fight on the front foot consistently he doesn't really have to do with that he can explode into range whenever he wants to because he's just that fast and he can cover the distance so he doesn't need to be very persistent and consistent in always coming forward always trying to get on to the outside because that's something that calvin gaston had to do robert whitaker doesn't have to do with that and that is something that is going to be a bigger puzzle for adesanya to solve because there are more tools He's not going to be in his face all the time. He's not really going to be coming at him consistently. And I believe that he's just going to have a lot more variety in just his approach to this fight that Adesanya will have to take into consideration. One thing about Adesanya that is pretty interesting that I've seen lately is that, yes, he's obviously a very skilled um, striker. But at the same time, he's also a fighter that tends to lean towards a certain way of fighting. And that is a long range fighting style that kind of prefers a defensive approach first than an offensive one and because of that he's not really going to be the guy that will really just go in there and be the ring general or make the opponent feel like they're just in there with an opponent that can go in there and uh, knock him out so against adesanya because he's defensive which is obviously the right thing to do given his frame range height reach whatever that is obviously the most logical thing to do but obviously at the same time there's only so much outside fighting you can do there's only so much defensive fighting that you can do before it all gets repetitive in a five round fight especially against somebody like Whitaker who has no problems going all five rounds and in those moments where let's say Robert Whitaker is able to figure out Adesanya figure out that he tends to faint first and then attack and stay on the outside or he tends to just stand parallel with his feet and then just move his head and then dodge to the outside step away get out of the danger zone so given the fact that Whitaker is a pretty small fighter given the fact that he can go all five rounds given the fact that he's a pretty fast and powerful fighter who is also very well rounded in MMA this is obviously going to be a very tough fight for Adesanya so in the end I would have to say that looking at it objectively in the five round fight where Adesanya won't be really knocking out Whitaker which is only my assumption he can go in there and knock him out obviously but I would have to assume and really expect Adesanya to not really knock him out because he's not a really powerful puncher we saw it against Anderson Silva he was not able to um, really hurt Anderson Silva knock him out knock him down he has Kevin Gastelum he really got him at the, at a point where Kevin Gastelum got really gassed out and Calvin really has about two and a half rounds in him before he starts slowing down against the fight or fighter I should say that is a pretty fast paced and high output fighter in those matchups he tends to slow down like he did against Chris Weidman but ultimately these are all only speculations and assumptions and 
theories on what could happen come fight night. But as I always like to say, in the end, only time will tell what will happen. For now, this was why Robert Whittaker could defeat Israel Adesanya. If you guys liked what you saw in this video, then be sure to drop a like on it and also subscribe if you are new. As always, I have been Keenan from Keenan KTV, signing off. Later.